This is it. The five best James Bond films, in my opinion. Now, most folks would probably end their top five with Sean Connery, but I've elected to start it with Sean Connery instead. So, now, for the film that narrowly beat out Goldfinger for my favorite Sean Connery entry, You Only Live Twice. In the film, James Bond must stop Spectre from igniting World War III. To do so, he has to die, or at least make it seem that way to his enemies. Once he's given some more elbow room, Bond sets off to Japan to find out who's been capturing U.S. and Soviet space vehicles, and setting the stage for war between the two superpowers. Eventually, Bond learns that Spectre is behind it all, and must put a stop to their evil scheme. By the order of Tiger Tanaka, head of the Japanese Secret Service, Bond goes undercover as a Japanese fisherman to better infiltrate the Spectre volcano base. Bond manages to infiltrate the volcano, but comes face to face with Ernst Stavro and Blofeld for the first time. With some help from Tanaka and his ninjas, and a lot of luck, Bond is able to stop Spectre's plan for world domination and over World War III. Two words, Little Nelly. That thing is awesome. Most would say it's ridiculous, but then so is everything else in the film. And Connery may be starting to look bored in this one, but he looks into it enough that it still makes it fun. And I really like the fight scenes in the film. The two standouts are the fight in Osato's office and the fight at the Kobe docks. The office fight is particularly brutal, what with Bond beating a henchman with a frickin' sofa. Fun fact, the henchman that Bond is fighting is the grandfather of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for those of you who didn't know that. And to me, the Kobe Docks fight seems to sort of foreshadow the epic scope of the next film which, of course, is on Her Majesty's Secret Service, you know, right down to the music when Aki makes a run for it. Speaking of Aki, I like her and Kissy. I've always had an affinity for Asian girls, so maybe that has something to do with it. Anyway, last but not least, Donald Pleasance as Blowfilm. If not for his performance, there would be no Austin Powers, so thank you, Mr. Pleasance. I have one tiny problem with the film. Oh wait, did I say tiny? I meant I have a massive, huge, gigantic problem with the movie. Making James Bond Japanese. Do you think he's turning Japanese? I don't really think so. Having Sean Connery squint isn't fooling me or anybody else. Of all the people I've asked, this seems to be their sole issue with the film. I just, I cannot believe the filmmakers actually thought audience were actually going to buy this. But, oh well, what can you do now? It's in the past. A lot of people aren't fond of this film because it's so over the top and fantastical. But what do you expect when the guy who wrote the screenplay also wrote James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and so on? It's because it's so over-the-top and fantastical that I love it. So with that, I give the film 5 out of 5 stars. So thus ends the Sean Connery James Bond films. Tune in next week for the number 4 spot on the countdown. Bye. Nobody does it half as good as you, baby. You're the best.